the last video I posted, which was about creating Photoshop actions, uh, which was part of the free trial of my video course, Learn to Color Comic Books 101, uh, it's gotten a lot of great responses on social media, which is awesome. Uh, but one of the questions that I received from uh, someone on Instagram, actually, was uh, asking about what type of computers they should use. And I was thinking about it, and I realized, well, I have another video that is also part of the uh, free trial on Learn to Color Comic Books 101 uh, that goes over just that, all the recommended recommended materials, stuff that you need, um, and you know what do I want to look at when you want to start playing around with uh, doing uh, digital coloring, and other stuff uh, that you don't really need but can be useful that you might want to add on as well uh, if you have the funds. Um, so I figured why not share that onto my YouTube channel as well. So here, here it is, uh, recommended materials. Hello and welcome back. This is Learn to Color Comic Books 101 uh, Recommended Materials. Uh, the first thing you're going to need, obviously, is a computer. And I just jotted down some of the typical recommendations um, that you would need in order to be able to just use Photoshop. Uh, basically, you would want like a 2 gigahertz or faster processor with 64-bit support, which I think most modern computers have already. I know I think pretty much all Macs do. I don't know about PCs. Um, you know, you want a relatively uh, recent operating system. Uh, you want to make sure, though, if you're going to be purchasing software, that uh, it works with the operating system you have. Uh, you're going to want no less than 2 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, I've read that 8 gigabytes is optimal for Photoshop. If you have more, I think you're fine. Uh, then, and you also want, this is mostly for uh, installation, but you're going to want uh, at least 3.2 gigabytes of available hard disk space. And of course that's going to depend, again, on like your version of Photoshop you're using. Uh, but I'm going to show you what I'm currently using, and I'm actually using, well you can tell I'm using a Mac, I'm actually using a MacBook Pro. Um, see, and you see I have a 2.9 gigahertz internal core i7 processor. I have 8 gigabytes of memory. Um, I'm using uh, this is Mavericks OS 10.9.5. Let's see. Yeah, that's so that's that's basically what I'm using. So you can see comparison. You don't really need anything fancy, unless you want to. I mean, if you want to get really serious about it, you can get, you know, an awesome machine. Um, but, I, you know, I wouldn't try and break the bank at it, at, you know, at this point, especially if you're just giving this coloring thing a try. All right, again, software, I said, really, all I'm going to be using is Photoshop. That's the primary thing I use uh, to color comic books. Um, there's uh, various, you could use a, uh, various versions. Again, make sure though, uh, if you're going to purchase a version of Photoshop, if you don't already have it, um, make sure that what you get uh, works with the, what operating system you have. Uh, I know some versions, like earlier versions of Photoshop, don't work with like um, more recent Mac uh, operating systems. So you definitely want to make sure you check that out before you buy something. Um, I'm using Adobe Photoshop Creative Cloud 2014 as I'm recording these and I just want to show you these are relative because this this one goes on a subscription basis so it's a little bit uh, more affordable especially if you just want to give it a try because this is the plan I'm under right here which gets you the latest version of Photoshop and that's just $9.99 a month you know pretty affordable uh, especially like I said if you're just giving this a try then you could subscribe and try it for a few months and if you decide like oh this isn't for me I'm not going to be using Photoshop anymore because um, I'm, I'm no longer interested in trying to color or whatever I, I hope you keep going but you know if you decide it's not for you then you can you know give it a try for a few months and you know say you try it for three months and then decide it's not for you you can unsubscribe and you've only spent a, you know a little under thirty dollars so um, yeah so if you don't already have 
um, Photoshop, Creative Cloud might be something to investigate. Uh, uh, and uh, one of the also re um, requirements if you're going to use Creative Cloud, and I think some of the later versions of uh, Creative Suite is you would need uh, internet in order to activate it. Uh, okay, again, a display. That's another thing you're going to need. It's something to look at. Um, you know, of course, like I said, I'm using a MacBook. Even though I, ha uh, for this current MacBook, I'm using an external display, uh, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, but I used to use the first MacBook I actually used for working was an old uh, 2008 MacBook 15-inch Pro, and I just used the the built-in display for that one. I was able to calibrate it, uh, but the thing, the thing, the only thing I really want to emphasize for when you get a display, for me, uh, you know, other people are more picky, but for me, just make sure it's comfortable, uh, because you're going to be staring at it for hours at a time. So you want to make sure it's comfortable. Because uh, something I discovered uh, once, I you know, once my last CRT monitor, you know, the big bulky ones, once my last CRT monitor died, um, and then I started getting more modern uh, displays, is that. I've discovered that I'm photosensitive, and there's certain displays that are just so bright that working on it, even just for a few minutes, will make me nauseous, and I'll be nauseous for the rest of the day. And I need a display that I can uh, set at a brightness low enough where it doesn't make me nauseous. Um, and I remember one of the first, you know, modern displays I tried to get because uh, I knew some other colors that used them was. Um, an Apple Cinema display, but that one was just so bright it made me nauseous. I couldn't I couldn't adjust it to a point where it was comfortable on my eyes, and I had to send it back. Um, so, you know, it's difficult to determine which displays are going to be comfortable for you without trying them. But you know, try to do a little bit of research and you know find out what uh, you can adjust properly. And um, yeah, and like here I said. Uh, one that can be easily calibrated for both accuracy and comfort, because you do want to have, you know, relatively accurate colors um, to calibrate for your display, uh, which I'll get in, in a little bit. Um, all right, so the next thing you would need is uh, basically digital drawing tools, uh, and you can use a mouse. I don't recommend it. I will say when I first started coloring professionally. I did actually use a mouse. I don't know how I did it. Um, I think, you know, you, you probably could get away with it on uh, this course with just doing a simple uh, cut and grad technique. But uh, the problem with a mouse, though, is you won't be able to take advantage of the pressure sensitive tools in Photoshop. Um, so that's why I, you know, recommend getting some sort of Wacom tablet if you don't already have it. Wacom or Wacom. I've heard it pronounced both ways. I'm not sure which one's official, but um, it might be Wacom. That sounds better. But um, yeah, so I'm going to go back to the internet here and show you the Wacom, Wacom store. <laughs> uh, here's a few different tablets uh, that are available, and you can see there are various prices. I've heard people using the bamboo one just to start off with something affordable. As you can see, it's $40. Looking at it, I'm not sure how well that would work. Um, but then there's the Intos Pen, well, Pen and Touch. I would just go with the Pen because I don't know if you really need the the Touch tools. The Touch, I think, is making it more like like a phone or something where you can put your fingers on it, zoom in and stuff. Might be handy, but I don't know if it's really necessary for the price. Yeah, this one actually looks like it's still eighty dollars. Hold on, pen and touch. Okay, pen and touch is two hundred dollars. So, yeah, for the for the touch, you get you, know, you have to pay quite a bit more. Um, well, that's the medium though. Let's put the small. The small is a hundred. Yeah, this is probably this is probably more the equivalent of actually my first tablet, which is which is a small little thing. No real flares, but you know that th this might be a good one to start with. 
But like I said, I probably would just get the one with the pen. I don't know if I would mess with the touch if you you know unless you want it. Um, next would be all right, well there's the Intuos Pro. Different sizes here. Um, nice thing with this one is it's got the hotkeys and the sliders, which are you know once you start using those you'll you know you won't want to use anything else. So that's the next step up. Um, the one I'm actually using is a Cintiq, though is one they don't make anymore. It's a, a Cintiq 12WX. It looks like the closest to that is the 13 HD. Yeah, pen only. That's $800. This one's nice because this takes play or this takes care of both your digital drawing tools and your display because they're all in one. Um, which is nice, and you can, if, if you want to splurge and even more money, you can get a larger one. They have a 22 HD. That see, you can see that's getting pricier. Uh, but again, these hotkeys are invaluable. <laughs> and yeah, and then well, that's the 22 HD again. There you go. And then they have the. This is looks like the largest one they have available. The 27 QHD looks fancy, pretty large. Um, I'd almost be interested in one of those, but again, I'm just worried that with the size, um, I don't know how comfortable it is would be to look at. I'd like to try one out before I got one, but again, that's something you can try if you really um, are feeling spicy and want to spend the money on that but but uh, like I said there's a lot of different options at a lot of different price ranges whatever you're most comfortable with yeah back to this okay then some optional things you don't really need it's like you might want a scanner uh, if you actually want to scan artwork you have your own um, I'm not really going to be getting into scanning on this course but that's just something if if you do your own artwork and you want to color it a scanner probably would be a useful thing to have another thing I was mentioning um, calibrating your display now you can basically like on Mac here go to your settings go to displays color and see there's a calibrate button and that you can do that um, I'm not going to go through it right now because I don't want to mess with my settings but you go through that and you basically eyeball it. It gives you a bunch of visual tests to calibrate it. And you can get a pretty good um, approximation that way. If you want to get more accurate, you can get a monitor calibration device, which I actually have one of those. Though, like I said, when I calibrate a display to get it to where it's accurate, since uh, you know I am photosensitive, I need to actually reduce the brightness a bit even from that. Um, but I it gets me in a close ballpark and then I adjust it more to where it's comfortable for me and uh, you know the colors still print well print how I expect so like I said it's not completely important to get it to calibrate your monitor or your or your um, display you know you don't have to get too strict with it but if you want to get something more you can get a spider. I actually have a Spider 3 Elite. This is the next uh, generation. I believe a Spider 5 is about to come out. And there's several different packages you can get. Uh, this is their official site at spider.datacolor.com. Um, didn't look like they actually had prices, but I looked on Amazon and you can see uh, the Spider 4 Pro is 169 Spider 4 Elite is like 250, um, or it looks like the cheapest one is the Spider 4 Express, which is 100. And basically, I mean, you can see what it looks like. This is a little device. It basically um, it works with software that it comes with, and it hangs from the top of your monitor, and it's a sensor. And your, um, you know, the software will go through all these stages. And it and you basically you adjust your monitor and it sent and it will sense when it's in within the correct parameters of being accurate. And once you're done, you have a pretty um, 
accurate calibration so you know that the colors you're seeing on screen uh, will be close to what they would be in print. Alright, and then going back to that, alright, my, my last optional um, thing you could get is a smudge guard. Again, not, not required, but this is a nice little thing. I use it every day, um, but this is their official website, smudgeguard.com. And also, if you you know if you draw traditionally too, this might be something you're interested in because as you can see, you know how it is to get pencil smudges on there. Basically, it's this little glove that protects the side of your hand. Um, and when working with a tablet, I don't know about you, but especially like during the summer, uh, my hands, especially when I'm working too, my hands have a tendency to get slightly clammy, and of course, and that causes extra friction when it's sliding across the across your tablet. Um, and it it gets in the way, so this just makes it so you can smoothly slide across your tablet. And actually, yeah, see, they show a guy using a um, Wacom Cintiq, and it just you know it just makes it easier to work. So that's that's all the things that um, you know you'll need the basic things you'll need to get through the course, and also a few things you might want to consider. And um, so after that, uh, we actually start getting into using Photoshop. I'll see you next time.